Hey Strong People, Kale Beck here, and I'm going to address the biggest topic in the moment in Strongman. Whether you like it or not, it is Larry Wheels competing in the sport. Uh, he's been doing a great video series on his YouTube channel, training with current World's Strongest Man, Hathor Bjornsson, and uh, it's very interesting to watch. Uh, I mean, there's what, in the Starting Strongman Facebook group, there's probably 50, 60, post a day about Larry Wheels. I can post relevant uh, strongman news about last minute qualifiers that are going on in Santa Monica this weekend. That's going to be in a future video, uh, my predictions on that. No one cares. But everyone, either they care or they want to say how little it matters that he's competing uh, matters, but they want to voice their opinion. And I was aware of Larry before all this. Uh, he's a very strong power lifter, uh, done some bodybuilding, uh, you know, he's got a good physique, he's, he's a freak, he's what, 24, very talented lifter, uh, but I just didn't really follow, I don't follow too much power lifting, um, and since then I, I've been, actually I watch all of the YouTube videos, I'm very impressed about how he approaches everything, uh, and I'm going to just address a couple things. First off, I've been hearing rumors that he's going to compete in Strongman uh, f since probably like three or four months. Uh, and even some pro Strongman that were a little ticked off, they thought he was going to get an automatic invite to World's Strongest Man is what I heard. I almost made a video on that. But I like to have some basis of fact before I put stuff like that out there. Uh, so I've been waiting on the whole Larry Wheel Strongman video, which uh, I'm doing right now. But the first thing I want to address is that, you know, they said he's going to sign up for the LA Fit Expo. It's put on by Ode Haugen. It's at the end of the month. It's in less than two weeks now. Uh, you know, so pretty much any day, just any day now, he's going to make a strongman debut. That's an amateur competition. It used to be a pro-am competition. It used to be a qualifier for the pro Arnold. So another, uh, you know, just completely unrelated note is it's kind of sad that the LA Fit Expo is now just an amateur contest with uh, still big, um, you know, it still leads somewhere. It leads to the, you know, pro Arnold, or not pro Arnold, sorry, amateur Arnold, but it used to be an all pro contest and one of the biggest contests in America of the year. And it's now just, you know, I could go compete in it tomorrow. So uh, still a big contest, but not the same level it used to be. It's also lighter this year. And so basically, the winner, uh, I believe Valeri's going to compete as a heavyweight, I'd assume so. He's, you know, 280-ish pounds, and he talks about wanting to be 300 by the time he competes there. Um, the winner gets an invite to the Arnold Amateur uh, World Championship in Columbus, Ohio. At the last, it's like the very end of February uh, slash first weekend of March. It kind of starts on um, the Thursday there, so it kind of runs in between. So that's not that, it's what, six-ish weeks away as well. And that is a very, very, very hard show. I know it says it's an amateur contest, but it's as competitive as it gets. Basically, that's the show that we see a lot of the biggest names in Strongman. That's how we, we saw them get their start at that show. They came from, uh, we, we get a lot of, you know, the top Americans go there as well. Uh, you know, the top nationals uh, uh, finishers get an invite to the Arnold. If you win a Platinum Plus in America, you like the LA Fit Expo, you get an invitation to the Arnold Amateur. If uh, you, yeah, if you get Platinum Plus or that, or also if you're a, a middleweight 105 kilogram pro, I think you can compete at it now is one of the rules as a heavyweight. But you also see a lot of the, not they're not quite the big names, they're quasi pro strongman in Europe and international already compete. It's where we saw, you know, Mike Jenkins uh, went pro there. Um, Hafter Bjornsson got second to Matthias Braun one year, and then Mike Burke got third. So that's how big of a show it is. And the winner of the Arnold Amateur uh, qualifies for the Arnold Pro. So this is, even though it's technically an amateur contest, it's one of the biggest contests in the world and I have to say what is really um, 
I think is a big redeeming quality for uh, how Larry is going about getting the strongman is he's doing it the same way anyone would do it to advance to that level. He's not trying to get an invite right to a Giants live show. Uh, I'm, I, I think he probably could if he really um, went about it the right way just because he's already you know pro in a different sport and that's not unheard of in strongman that they just let a pro athlete uh, you know, or high level athlete from a different sport kind of already go to that pro level. There's weightlifters that transition right to it. Um, uh, which his name? Uh, cool. <laughs> uh, you know, so he could, but he's going, he's qualifying for the Arnold Amateur, which is then a qualify for bigger stuff. You, you know, the top placing American goes pro. So he's doing it the same way any other uh, aspiring strongman, you know, would have to go about it to get to all those levels of going pro and uh, going to worlds and everything else. Uh, so, you know, he's doing it the right way. He's not taking any favors. He's doing it the hard way. The Arnold Amateur is hard. Um, but I'm going to just kind of break down. Watching his videos, I think he's improving very quickly. He definitely has a knack for learning. He asks Thor a lot of good questions. And what I really like about what he does is he's asking the, the simple questions uh, to people and you can tell he's asking it for his audience so it's introducing a lot of people to strongman and that, that that's great you know he's ask these questions that you know if you've been in the sport for a while you just kind of take for granted uh he's just you know just a little thing like what's the difference between a yoke and a super yoke if there's kind of not i was always told when i started that uh a yoke is one with the bigger crossbar and then the nor uh, super yoke has the big crossbar and then the um, the regular yoke has like the two inch crossbar. So, uh, going on to the LA Fit Expo, how do I think he's going to do? Um, I think his biggest issues watching his training are his mobility and probably overall conditioning and struggling a little bit with the yoke. It's not super fast, and people are very fast with the yoke. But everything else, he seems to be, um, you know, a couple, like just even a second, third time training, getting to hang up very quick, very quick with sandbags. Log looks good. Even stuff he's struggle with, you know, the first time, it's your first time, um, are looking very strong. But so the events for the LA Fit Expo, uh, the LA Fit, Fit Expo is set up a, a very different, put on by Ode Haugen. So there's eight overall events, but something I think that really benefits Larry in this is that the final score on who wins, they only count your, uh, six events. So if you like, if you have a poor finish in one of the eight, that doesn't count towards your score. You take your six highest placings, uh, or you can even skip two events. So someone being very new, he might make some mistakes or not be as comfortable with certain events yet. He, you know, he can pretty much just wash those away. And that's a very different rule compared to a lot of uh, different strongman shows. So there's a 120 total feet farmer's walk with 305 and a hand. Uh, that should be a, a good event for him. Uh, he's looking fast with that kind of weight, so I don't see any problem there. An overhead lift medley, which is a block axle ending with a 127 kilogram log. So that's like 280-ish, 270-ish pounds. Again, I think that should be good. He just has to be quick and give him enough time to get some reps on the log, just as long as his conditioning is up to snuff. Uh, leverage squat. So this is only like 231 kilos. That's what... 500-ish pound, five, mid fives. So that's that, that should be a, a really strong event for him. You're just squatting up against a lever. So it's basically like doing like a car squat where it's like a lever arm, like a car deadlift, and you're squatting into it. So you can, it's kind of like a leg press in a way. That's going to be a lot of reps because it seems relatively light. Um, the event, if I was him, I would skip would be one of these where it's a giant tire flip duel, man on man. It says the athletes will each attempt to flip a 1100 pound tires in a duel with a round like and then another athlete steps in once another athlete fails so n total number you flipped it is uh how you win so that's a, a lot of flips with an 1100 pound tire um i know that i've seen that tire it's a nasty tire it's a very hard tire to flip um i just think the risk of injury is very high in that event especially if you're very new to strongman but the, the flip side is i think even one rep on that will be big points in that event uh, Viking press, you're just pressing into a, you know, apparatus and that, that's another, you know, 
these events are very good for him for a first show for someone coming in. There's nothing too tricky. Um, yeah, so that's 131 kilos. So you can't jerk the weight, which he's not going to anyways. He can just strict press that as long as his shoulder endurance is up. I mean, it's just like doing a machine press, basically. Uh, a yoke race with a sandbag. It's an 800-pound yoke with a 300-pound sandbag. That's the hardest event out of this. Um, a lot of people are very fast. If it was just a straight shot with a yoke, I think it would be even worse for him um, compared. There's a, a lot of strong top amateurs signed up for this show, but there's none where I'm like, or their names like super stick out, but you know, they're good veterans of the sport that are all very uh, knowledgeable. So this isn't going to be easy, but I think him winning it isn't out of the question. Then the other event I would skip would be the Moss Wrestling, just, you know, the to train that in the timeline and the risk for injury is too high, especially if you want to do the Arnold Amateur at the end. I would skip that. And then the double overhand axle deadlift. So you're just, you're doing an axle deadlift for max weight double overhand it's a grip event um i i just there's no harm or foul you're not gonna get hurt doing it he might as well do that and see how his points stack up i imagine it would be fairly well um but if he does win that he qualifies for the arnold um amateur and that has a log clean and press where you have to clean each rep with 330 pounds i think the amateur is going to be very hard um just because that's one of the hardest shows there's going to be 30 40-ish competitors, so if you make one mistake, you don't have, uh, you know, you could one second here, half a second there, could be 10 points at a show like this, and these are all people that have been doing strongman for a very long time, so one little mistake is going to really cost you. Um, the top 10 advance to day three, so you do a log clean and press away, you have to clean each rep, which is with 330 pounds, I think the biggest thing will be how he can keep his conditioning up and keep uh, getting better and more efficient with the clean. Kind of muscles the clean right now. Uh, farmer's walk, just straight shot 60 feet, 340. Shouldn't be too much of a problem, but again, it's just, it's a foot race. It's not about strength at that point. You have to be strong enough to move it, but people are very, very fast at these events. Day two, all athletes compete axle deadlift. You know, a pretty standard 700 pound axle deadlift for, out, for reps, straps are allowed. You have to strap in on your own time though, so you have to be, you know, very set on that. And then, uh, you know, then then the other event, which is going to require a little bit more, um, it's going to be a foot race. So a block carry into a hand over hand. I don't think that's too tough of an event, even though it is a 390 pound block. That's pretty heavy, especially having touched one. Be smart to go over to the training hall and get some practice on that event beforehand. Then day three, the top 10 uh, heavyweights will qualify for day three. And I think if he made day three, it would be a, a, a huge accomplishment. Uh, and then the top American generally gets a pro card out of that, um, even if other international um, athletes uh, are placed above you. That's my understanding. And that's a, ax it's a, a press medley, axle, barbell, and a dumbbell press. And then the next, the last event's a mystery event. So no, who knows? So who knows? Um, doing winning the Arnold Amateur, I think it's far fetched at this point, but it's definitely a great test, and we'll get like half was saying in the video, it gets you noticed by all the international promoters, and it kind of even if you don't win, if you if you uh, make the top ten, you're definitely on the radar, um, and pretty much at a pro level, I'd say if you if you're in the top ten. Uh, of that, especially doing, you know, doing the implements for such a short amount of time. Uh, I think uh, people, uh, something I want to address real quick is that the people that are ragging on, they say, we like Larry, but we hate his fans. So you don't have, fans are fans. You got to let fans be fans. Uh, they're fanatics. They don't need to have any rhyme or reason why they uh, don't like this or do like that, you know, that they just, they, they follow someone, they appreciate it. And what, um, other strong men that, or, you know, whoever that seem like it's taking away from this person, what they could learn is how he, uh, presents himself is very well. He documents all of his training. They're very long videos. Did never, never thought I would watch a 40 minute training video, but somehow I just watch them and I actually enjoy it. Um, and what he's doing is he's showing every step. He's showing the struggle. He shows his warm-up. He's not just showcasing, 
you know, at the end of the eight weeks, this is what happens. So it's building up. You get this anticipation. Oh, what do you do now? Oh, he struggled with that. Oh, this week he's better. You have to present a story for storyline for people to follow and actually get interested. And that's something that the sport needs more of. And I hope that people that want to raise their own profile that are very strong. There's so many strong, talented, uh, unknown athletes out there in the sport that could do uh, better off just to kind of see what he's doing and uh, do do more of that yourself and it would just be better for the sport overall. We're getting a lot of more long form video content from Martins, Brian Shaw, uh, you know, this video series and it's great for the sport and I think more athletes, uh, if they if that's what they want, if they want to, you know, have, have a following and build up their name and have people appreciate their accomplishments, then they, they need to put the work in and make way too long videos like I just did. I'm Kale Beck. Thanks for watching. Go to startingstrongman.com for all of your strongman training information and go to store.startingstrongman.com for everything you need to excel in the sport of strongman, even if you're just starting out like Larry Wheels.